Frank, good morning. Oh, it's time for another Sunday morning coding stream. I've uh, been looking at some of the code, trying to uh, decide what we're going to do today, kind of remember where things were a week ago, and uh, what comes next, and uh, chipping away a little bit at some of the errors that were uh, left from last time. So uh, I think we were on a road to setting up a priority queue using uh, a Redis, I think it's called a sorted set. Um, and to do that, we needed to um, add some things to kind of our representation of what a task is and uh, do some refactoring, move like the queue task function into into uh, its own thing. So this is in the, this is the task API uh, main.rs. So this is like our handler for calling uh, to create a task and to check on a task and, and those sorts of things. So instead of calling uh, L push directly on the Redis connection, we're calling Q tasks. So we're abstracting some of that out. Um, and then in task worker main.rs, so this is where the task worker is doing its work. Um, we spent a good amount of time figuring out how to and then implementing. Uh, some checks. So if uh, when the task worker runs a task, so it calls one of our other microservices and it um, gets an error, it's a certain kind of error, then we are um, putting the task back on the queue and we're saving a run after value, uh, which is what we uh, eventually landed on as a uh, name for when should this task, it shouldn't be run before uh, this value. Uh, and then we call queue task and we have a remove task from temp queue uh, function as well. And so what we're driving towards is not having anything directly call uh, methods on this Redis connection. So let's see. So we should just be passing the connection in to these methods rather than uh, um, uh, passing passing the connection to these these functions rather than calling methods on it like here. Right. So we have a to do um, yeah I mean we could do that but the the thing I want to do here is I want to extract out uh, what we're trying to do here right so our push test that a key oh I see so this is appending the results um, to the place where we're storing the, the result of running the task. Uh, is that is that the last place we're calling something directly on connection here? Okay, move this to a function called save task data. Sure. All right, let's get out of this this diff view. Um, yeah, this is where we were. Okay. So there should be a to do here. I did also in install an extension this morning to highlight to do's and fix me's and those sorts of things uh, just so they stand a little bit more. Um, okay. And then the last thing we did last time, well, this, this I did this morning, which is I had Copilot help me write uh, just the description of what the existing task worker lib.rs does. Um, 
and we had added run after. I decided if we're gonna have a chrono date time for the run after, we could also use that for last updated rather than passing around a string. Um, and then we did a lot of updating uh, and adding uh, run after to these various places where we're kind of serializing and deserializing it. And so this is the part where there were some outstanding errors from, from last stream, things that weren't quite done. Um, and there's our queue task function. Okay, so very briefly, that's that's uh, that's the catch up. So uh, today, I do want to finish this, and I, I'm maybe we'll even have time to work on other things. And there's lots of other things to work on in the uh, in the backlog. Uh, yeah, 43 to do's, <laughs> lots of things to do. Um, let's see, make the task worker skip over tasks that aren't ready to be run, make the YouTube upload endpoint return 503. Yeah, okay, so um, I, I hope we can finish this today though, in our three hours that the stream usually uh, goes for. So, um, Decisions, decisions. Um, I think I, I really, so these to-dos are not so important. They're, they're gonna clean up kind of the API of like these functions and kind of shift where we're calling expect. Hmm. We're gonna have to rewrite some of this stuff anyway. Um, so the part, so what do we need to do? Let's take a step back. What do we need to do here? So this implementation uses a list for the task queue. And then it has a separate list for um, uh, what in the code is referred to as a temp queue. Um, other places refer to it as a processing list. So the, the things that are being processed right now. So um, what I need to do to achieve what we're trying to do with this this work, right? Which is to manage YouTube upload quotas. The way we're doing that is we're introducing the idea of having uh, a delay. So if we try to upload a video and we've run out of quota, as the error here shows. Um, oh, side side note, I did go and find this error. And uh, so this, this is what the error looks like coming back from YouTube when we try to upload and the quota is exceeded. Um, so when we get this kind of error, we want to delay processing the task um, for a while. A good long while actually, because it's a daily quota. So a day, um, but nonetheless, we wanna, we wanna delay the task. And the way of doing that, uh, that, I just, that I landed on last time was to use a sorted set, which is a, a Redis object type, data type. Um, okay. mm, I don't know what this is. This isn't. I mean, yes. Can we? Sorted set. Interesting. Maybe if I just go back. Let's just go to list of commands. Um, so, uh, oh, hold on, I have a list. I have a list. Uh, Zpop men. This is gonna get us, uh, and specifically bzpop men, because we want a blocking variant. We want our task worker to block to wait for the next uh, thing. Um, like if the queue is empty, we don't want to just spend, you know, uh, try to get 
something from the empty uh, key, right? The, the key is the queue. Uh, let's see, yeah. Busy pop men. Uh, so it's the blocking variant of the sorted set C pop men primitive. Uh, it'd be really nice if there was like um, a link to the documentation on sorted sets, but let's just maybe drill into here Z pop men. So Z pop men removes and returns up to count members with the lowest scores and the sorted set sort at key. So we, we can use Z add. Right, adds all the specified members with the specified scores to the sorted set stored at key. So you have a sorted set, so that's gonna be what represents our queue, a sorted set. And we'll be able to add a member, so like a string, that is the key to where the actual object representing the task is, and it's gonna have a score. And the score, should be a string representation of a double position floating point number. So what we'll need to do is we will need to translate our um, run after value into a score. And what's nice here is that we do want to look at the lowest run after value, right? So let's say we have a date and time. If we simply translate that into a numeric value representing the number of seconds, I don't know, say since January 1st, 1970, for some reason, um, then, <laughs> it's a little joke, then um, the lowest value is that the earliest run after, right? Um, and that's what we would probably want to look at first in terms of things that are up to be processed. Uh, we wanna look at the earliest one first. It's possible that the earliest one is still um, well in the future, right? Um, so the task worker will have to some something, some code somewhere, we'll have to check that case. But that that's the idea. So um, there are some things we need to do. So if we look at the task worker, when it is pulling a task off the queue, right, it says task equals pop task. So this doesn't entertain the possibility that it doesn't get a task. Um, and I think the easiest way to accomplish that is to have pop task, um, uh, just keep trying until it finds something, right? I suspect we probably have a to do in pop task to have it return a result. because there are things that can fail here. And currently we are just panicking if, uh, if things don't work. Uh, if I'm going to be, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and change this now. So we're gonna have this return result. Something like that. And then we don't need the to do anymore. Uh, now, of course, all this is wrong, but that's fine. Uh, so basically, we were saying that either this is going to return, so it's going to return this thing, this wrapper called a result, that can either be OK or error. Uh, and we're saying that the OK will contain a task, and the error is going to contain a string, which will just be like an error message. And that'll be fine for now. Um, so. Do we, are we calculating this temporary? At least it's in two places, probably more, right? No, just in here. Okay, well let's, while I'm here, let's uh, let's extract this too. I think I have a few different functions here of, of that nature. 
have a fn um, temp task. Yeah, that, there you go. Exactly. All right, and then down here. Does that take a task? It does, and it just reads the key. Nice. That's honestly better than just passing the ID. Uh, so yeah, anyway, it's, it's progress. All right. Where was the other place where we were? Uh, oh, colon temp here as well. Ah, wait, uh, that's what I get for trusting copilot. Uh, hold on. Generate temp Q name should not take a task because it's not it's not based on the key. It's based on the um, Q name, not the task. Silly me. There we go. Oh wait, 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 what? Hmm, were these not the same thing? They're not the same thing. One, oh, this is, this was just bugged. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yeah, because, so this should be, um, yeah, th this should be, this should not be task.key. This should be Q name. Of course, we don't have Q name here. Okay, so I implemented this three months ago. <laughs> and I implemented it wrong. That's good. That's real good. All right, cool. Um, So every place where we are removing tasks from temporary queue, we actually weren't. That makes sense. Okay, so now uh-huh. Try that again. There you go. There you go. Brilliant. Alright, and so there's one more place where we're trying to do this over here. Great, all right. Is it really refactoring if we have no unit tests? Should there, should we have unit tests? Probably. Uh, am I gonna do that right now? No. <laughs> mm. I was thinking about that this morning though, adding some, adding some unit tests here we need to like set up a mock connection to Redis and we would test out like, oh, you call this and it does these things. Would there be a lot of value in doing that? Given that I'm about to change what all the different, like all of these things are gonna be calling different Redis um, methods. So maybe not. If I could think of a good way to kind of, if there was an abstraction here that I could test. 
that was not specific to how we're interacting with Redis. Um, maybe. Like the, the task serialization, deserialization. Um, like how we're taking a task and we're processing it in certain ways. Um, turning it from what we're getting from Redis of like uh, a hash map like this. Like, like this bit of code could really be tested. Um, but we're not currently. Uh, okay. Literally, literally. I, need, I just need to say okay right here. <laughs> and that will make this happy. Uh, but if we're going to do this, we might as well um, surface these errors. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, match all of this. And then, uh, let's see, map error, yeah, okay, or return error. Uh, is that the right error message that we want to surface? Well, what's interesting here is that if I did this, oh, okay. So the reason we need to have the match and we can't just do map error is because that would make task key be a result, right? We need to unpack it to get either the task key or to return, which will exit the function, uh, the error. And E here is that string. Now, instead of using map error like Copilot gave for us, we could move the string into here, and then this part would not be necessary. And then we just get rid of E and we'll just say something. It's a little bit more compact. So is that uh, failed to move task from Q to temp Q? That, that, is, that is kind of what we're trying to do here. Um, and then we can do something similar where we match the results. And we do um, okay. Or if there's an error, fail to get task data. And a semicolon. And there we go. So we've converted pop task to return a result. Now that's broken our, our consuming code here. Um, because we were assuming that the task is going to be a Pop task will return a task, which uh, is not the case. So here um, in the task worker, I've decided that we are going to just panic if there's any kind of problem. So we're just going to expect uh, and then panic with a failed to pop task error uh, if that fails. The reason and pop task is kind of the worst example of this because pop task is only going to be used by the worker, but this lib.rs is kind of all the functions to interact with Redis um, and can be used both by the task worker and the task API. So there are potentially multiple things calling these functions, which is why I wanted to, them to not uh, have a dot expect uh, like this. Um, so to address this, I'm going to move up um, the processing of last updated. Like so. We have like a shorthand syntax, right? We can do this. Of course, we don't want to expect here. What we're going to do is we're going to match. And... really likes expect. Okay, so um, no. So okay. Timestamp. Timestamp. But if there's an error, uh, we don't want to we don't want to just silently uh, except invalid values, we're just going to return an error. Okay, 
So that's that. And then we want to do the same thing for last after. Uh, run after. And so that replaces that. Uh, and then we have some more things. We have failing to parse the payload, failing to pass, uh, parse the task ID. So is there a task from? There is. Oh, we should use that. Okay, then if I do that, How does that work? It's just gonna panic. How do you do error handling if you if you have something like this? Converts to this type from the input type, right? So from hash map for uh, into a task. Because you can't you can't say impl from hash map for result task because you can't implement things on you know types defined elsewhere. Okay, well I don't I don't know how to solve that. It's probably worth thinking about. But uh, yeah, why, why aren't we just using task from task data? Let's, uh, hold on. So if I um, split right, we can go look at this implementation. How does this differ from this? Key, task key. All right, all right. So, in this implementation, we already have the task key, so we just use it. Whereas this one, it recalculates it um, from the ID from the hash map, but those should be equivalent. Uh, ID title, URL payload, data key status. Okay, so all the same things are there. So yeah, why wouldn't I just do okay task? I mean, for that matter, if I'm not gonna do anything with it, let's do that. Okay. All right, so now I've done the thing that I was I was thinking I wasn't going to do, a bunch of, uh, you know, rewriting stuff, um, but hey, it's fine. It's, uh, it needed to be done anyway. But yeah, let's let's actually address the thing though. So we need to change this, right? So we're using BL move. So this is a blocking list move command. So it pops an element from a list, push it to another list and return it, or block into one that's available. So this needs to be replaced with, uh, what do we say? Uh, BZ pop min. Um, so, if I say match, uh, con dot bz pop min and then key is the q name timeout is zero and then we get a member with the lowest score in the sorted set blocks until a member is available okay so um, should be an okay case. So what is the, what is the shape of this result? What is result RV? Uh-huh, uh-huh. K to Redis args, RV from Redis args. It's kind of opaque to me what all that means. Um, but I think the idea 
is going to be that we do want to get a task key. Now it's not happy because we are not covering the error case. So the error case here is um, maybe the queue is actually not a sorted set or something like that. I think that might result in an error here, that sort of thing. So that seems, let's see, doesn't like something here. Arguments to this method are incorrect because it needs to be a float. So we have to put 0, 0.0 there, great. All right, and we're currently not using task key. Uh, okay, so let's add some comments to kind of clarify. So pop the task from the queue. Um, highest priority. Right, the point of the comment is not to just say what the code is already saying, which hopefully you're you're able you have functions that have meaningful names. I mean, BZ pop min is meaningful in a Redis sense, but even if it was just like pop and we have queue name, that kind of implies that we're popping a, ta a thing off of a queue and we're calling it a task, so it must be a task. So if we can give some more color in the comment to what we're actually trying to do here, that's, that's helpful for, you know, me of next week. Um, and then, so the next thing to do is, yeah, move the task to the temp queue. We're losing out on the ability for that to automatically happen because we're not able to use BL move. Um, so that, that, that's not helpful code, but let's just keep on thinking about, is there anything else that BL move is doing? Because we're going to be get rid getting rid of this. Um, I think that's it, right? So we're popping it off of the task and then we are moving it to the temp queue. So the thing that we are not doing here that we need to do is um, check if the task um, is the tasks, um, what, do, what do we call it? <laughs> what do we, uh, hold on, run after, run, after timestamp is in the future. Um, I think we want to check it if it is in the past. Let's see. How do we? How do we want to phrase this? If it's in the future, then we want to unpop it. We want to put it back on to the uh, the queue, and we want to just retry and wait. Okay, uh, we're, we're just gonna keep on, if it is, put the task back in the queue and not return. Hey, death row, good morning. How's it going? Put the task back in the queue. We don't wanna return an error. Uh, what do we wanna do? We want to, um, we wanna wait uh, for some time and try again. Chilling, all right, all right. Okay. Um, so how am I going to structure this? Right? Because we are going to need to, depending on... Oh, I could just, just have a while loop here. Uh, while let. Drinking some coffee, about to play some games. Nice, nice. I've already went through my uh, my two shots this morning, so it's just water. Um, yeah, I might have to cut back on the coffee a little bit just for the sake of convenience um, and not kind of uh, pair pair back from uh, the the two shots in the morning and the two shots in the afternoon. 
because I uh, I'm gonna be getting some Invis Invisalign uh, Invisaligns <laughs> those things gonna be getting some trays uh, here in a couple weeks I only drink two cups a day one in the morning one before stream yes I mean that that is what I do too but my two cups are uh, sort of um, but my my cups are like two shots of espresso and some uh, some sweetened creamer stuff that I have um, but I use uh, have that second second uh, dose of caffeine after lunch uh, usually but uh, yeah how, how's this gonna work while let is a thing in rust where we can say while let and then we can like unpack hold on you know what's good sometimes is to just look at like rust docs um, while let how do you work? Oh yeah, there's a loop. So similar to if let, while let can make awkward match sequences more tolerable. Um, so we can do while let sum i equals optional. What does this syntax mean? This reads while let these structures optional into some I. Oh, all right, it's mutable. I see. Huh? Maybe not then. Maybe not. Maybe not a thing I want to do. Um, because the, okay. Um, I think let's think about how this is going to shape up, right? So essentially this part here can be like an F where it's going to evaluate into either um, we could have it yeah be an optional thing how would this work again this kind of does the opposite of what I want right because what I want to do is I want to loop while we don't have a thing while we don't have a Hmm. Yeah, quit when the destructure fails, which is, yeah. Is there a way to do the opposite? Maybe, but I don't know what that that would be. So we're just gonna we're gonna loop till I learn how to do something better. Uh, there we go. We're gonna we're gonna loop over this and then uh, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna loop over this part. Can can we do? Loops can be used as an expression that returns values via break. Yes. So I can do something like let um, task key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then move the task to the temp queue. Yes, this is gonna work. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good.
it's gonna be good because um assuming it doesn't have a problem with yeah okay good so I say if it is, put the task back in the queue. I say, I say. No. <laughs> if I put the task back in the queue, wait for some time. So we'll just we'll we'll delay and then we'll let the loop continue. If it if it isn't if it isn't um in the future break the loop break task key, right? So that'll, that'll allow task key from in here to escape the scope and be put into this task key. And then we'll move the task onto the temp queue. And then this goes away. Uh, because we'll, we'll have a different, we'll have something like this. Um, except actually handling the error. <laughs> Match. Uh, that curly brace. Uh, it doesn't like this L push for some reason. Why not? Cannot satisfy underscore from Redis value. Consider specifying the generic arguments. std string string, std string string rv. What are, can we look at the definition of this? Yeah, key and value. Um, what did because I no I didn't have an L push here before. Oh I see. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Great. Oh right, I have a Q task function. Oh yeah, that, that's different though. And this this has to be rewritten. Yes. Okay, so we'll do something like this. Does that make you happy? Yes. Okay, so L push inserts all the specified values at the head of the list stored at key. So key is temp queue name, so that's the the name, the key of a list that contains the things that are being worked on. And so we want, we would want to put the key of the task in that list. Now the question is, is this the same as what we had before in terms of uh, the semantics of how, the, the, the directionality of how we're adding things to the, to the list? So, um, before we had BL move, so BL move. Okay, I can't I can't look at the definition of BL move from this view. Um, so I think this is reading from the right hand side of this list list, and inserting on the left hand side of this list. So what is this saying? At the head of the list. So I think the head is supposed to be the left hand side. Maybe we should just look at L push. Uh, inserts all the specified values at the head of the list stored at key. If it doesn't exist, it's created. Uh, it's possible to push multiple elements. world and then hello so hello gets yeah I think I think the head of a list is the left side so 
So like if we look at uh, be on move. There we go. That's relevant. Left, right, left, right. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, I'll move source destination left, right. Okay, removes the first last element, head tail, depending on where from argument. Of the list stored. Uh huh, head tail, depending on where to. Destination, XYZ, source, destination, right, left, results in source, source which originally held ABC, will hold AB, so the right is the tail, destination holding CXYZ, so left is the head, yes, okay, super. Okay, so th this part should be fine. Uh, now we need to implement this part. Um, so, I wonder, so BZ pop men here, removes and returns the member with the lowest score and assorted set, blocks until a member is available uh, otherwise. So when we do this BZ pop men, do we what what do we actually get back? Um like we seem to think we get back a result with a string. But what do we get? Um Copilot thinks we get some kind of tuple or something. Maybe if we look at the net definition of arg here, it thinks we would get back immutable command. Data args cursor. Some data. Um, you know what could be really good? Do we have... I probably have in one of my many tabs some documentation for this Redis client. Uh, library and Rust. What do we think? I probably closed it. It's probably none of these tabs. Oh wait, there's more. I got something about box T. OAuth. Uh, okay, maybe not. Okay, so hold on. Uh, Redis. Rust. Is this the one that I'm using? Maybe. <laughs> uh, let's see, Cargo Tamil, uh, Redis, 0253. Uh, I'm, one, I'm one patch version behind, but it's probably fine. Let's look at the documentation. Okay, functions. Modules, how about I just, can I, can I search? Um, BZ pop men. Removes and returns. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. So there's the CMD struct. Represents a Redis, Redis command. Builder interface. So that's what the thing that I'm calling thing uses with all the arg and such. Uh -huh. Cursor arg, query, create async, iter, iter async, execute. Purely great. 
would be like actual examples. Like if I just wanted a list of all the functions and the comments from the source code, I could just look at the source code. Of course, maybe those comments get a, ooh, examples. Uh, let's see here, low level commands, high level commands, uh huh, type convention, type conversions. Type lists, yeah, yeah, yeah. The arg method of the command will accept a wide range of types. Uh, and a query method of a command can convert its value to what you expect the function to return. Uh huh. Pipelining. Command pipelines. This is provided through the pipe function. It works very similar to sending individual commands, but you can send more than one in one go. You can ignore individual results. Matching at the end is easier. Interesting. Transactions. I don't think I've ever done anything with uh, Redis transactions. Transactions are available through the atomic through atomic pipelines. In order to use them in a more simple way, you can use the transaction function of a connection. Redis transaction. We pass the connection. We pass a key, and then we get a um, essentially a lambda, right? A, a, a function we can pass in and and do stuff inside of. There's pub sub, scripts, async. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Well, that's not super helpful. Uh, it probably would be eventually. So if I look at um, the actual docs for zpop men. So when you zpop men, you get the thing, and then you also get the um, the score. And that's that's really what I'm after here, right? Because if I don't have that, then in order to do this logic, I would have to go and fetch the um, timestamp from the hash, which I could do. I could even use that pipeline thing to like. Uh, probably not because I'd have to know the like I would have to know what the first thing gave to get the next thing. Hmm. But anyway, um, so I think what I want to do here is I want to try doing something where I do like task key comma score. Um. We'll do that. And then interesting. Let's see if we can do this. Where did the music go? It's so quiet. Maybe my headphones are. something interesting I'm not seeing the uh, the on-screen volume thing that I'm used to seeing so I thought maybe maybe the headphones were dead but nope just weird situation uh, okay so yeah something like this is what should be coming back let's see how it likes this we're not using score. It seems to believe that this could work. Hmm. Okay. So we're gonna do let's run after. 
right, but we're not going to use HKit. We could use HKit and fetch the run after um, from the from the hash, but instead we can convert. So we can do like chrono from timestamp score. Um, we do want to handle the case where. Do I want to handle the case? I guess if it's um, if it's not present, we just uh, or if uh, if the timestamp can't be parsed, we'll just treat it. We'll just process it immediately. Maybe, or maybe I want to maybe I want to treat that as an error. That's probably better to just treat it as an error. Um, traceability, like trying to figure out why something's not working right. Uh, okay, so we have this run after, and uh, oh yeah, so this, this is wrong, because this should be like sum, uh, and then this should be none, one, <laughs> none, uh, I think that's right, there we go. Okay, cool, so uh, it's been about an hour, I'm gonna, let's take a break here, go get some more water, and uh, I'll be back in just a few. BRB.